Alhamdulillah, wa salam, wa wa rasulullah. Welcome to another uh, day of fasting, which is almost at an end here where I am. Uh, this is day 11. Uh, day 11 is just now about to wind down on the East Coast of uh, the USA. Uh, it's already winded down for those of you in the United Kingdom uh for the west coast you got a couple of more hours to go still but alhamdulillah this is the second week of ramadan we are in the second uh, week of fasting mashallah the second phase of the road to righteousness and again as we discussed yesterday this is the second week and being the second week now that your body is adjusted to fasting it's all about working on uh getting the benefits of the fast now it's all about making use of your time first of all making sure that uh you're spending your time wisely you don't want to spend your time sleeping all day let me talk about that for a minute yeah let's talk about it let's talk about it I got an email uh, yesterday uh, from one of the uh, new followers on YouTube saying that uh, her husband, yeah, it's a husband, always one of those. Her husband sits up at home all day sleeping, sleeping. She say he spends the fasting day sleep. She said he doesn't wake up until it's time to break fast and then when he wakes up and it's time to break fast she says he breaks his fast and he's up all night long eating basically she says that's all he do eat all night long watching television yeah she said he watches the satellite tv <laughs> Then uh, after everybody else gets up, after he keeps them up with that noise, they get up to make fire. That's when he goes to bed. So her question is, what kind of Ramadan is her husband having? I told her, well, you already know what kind he's having. He's having a, a terrible Ramadan. That's all he's doing is just sleeping and, and eating, basically. He's not reaping the reward of anything. First of all, I didn't want to get personal, but why isn't he at the mosque? Hello, why doesn't he work? Maybe he got laid off. You never know, COVID could be that he's shut. He's probably shut down, no telling. Basically, sisters, what you're gonna have to do, if you're married to a man like that, Look at the rewards you will get as a woman to by going to him and telling him, first of all, honey, you're not making the use of your time wisely. We don't fast just to fast. We fast to get righteous, to become closer to Allah, to uh, better ourselves. You should try to encourage him to spend the day. Evidently, he doesn't have to work, so he should spend the day at the mosque. That would be a better use of time for a man because a man's prayer at the mosque is multiplied even more in rewards during this sacred month. So evidently, the brother's not working, so you should encourage him that after making Fajr at the mosque, he should stay there. He should stay there until time to break fast. Maybe the imam needs help. <clears throat> Volunteer his services. Ask the imam if the, he can call the adhan for them, if he knows how, okay? Ask the imam, does he need help uh, 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 figuring out things or you know something like that? Volunteer his service to Allah. But to sit around sleeping all day, this is not a good usage of time. You're not reaping the reward of Ramadan. You're just going without food and, and, and that's it. You want to do the deeds. Remember, all good deeds are multiplied so much during this month, guys. So you don't want to lose out on that. 
So encourage the man to get up, go to the mosque and spend his time at the mosque. Come home after to, after tartar wheat. He should be making the tartar wheat prayer at the mosque with the imam. After the tartar wheat prayer, come on home, okay? And sleep like a normal person would sleep. SubhanAllah. Only people that stay up like that are people like me who can't get off a third shift schedule. I worked third shift for 30 years and oh my God, I can't get off that schedule. I wished I could sleep at night. SubhanAllah. That's just ridiculous. So you don't want to um, uh, 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 make the, you want, don't want to lose out on the rewards of this month. You know, so this is what the second week of fasting is all about reaping the rewards, not losing out. A lot of you who are new to fasting, you may be experiencing right now some fatigue because it's kind of tiring. You might be tired, just feel kind of like I felt today, just kind of tired, okay? I ordered me some vitamins, make sure I take my vitamin Ds, okay? But, uh, and vitamin D. A lot of us Muslims, for some reason, my doctor told me, she said, why is it, Layla? She said, oh, we know why. She said, but a lot of Muslims are vitamin D deficient, you know, for some reason. I don't know why, but a lot of us are vitamin D deficient. You know, vitamin D, you might want to take some vitamin D to give you a little bit more, more energy. Some vitamin B, vitamin B for your energy. You know, I take all of that. I have to because after having that gastric surgery I had, you know, my body doesn't, uh, it needs all those vitamins because it doesn't uh, re retain them. So, you know, you want to try to, you might this second week start feeling lazy and kind of listless, like, mm, yeah. I saw with the kids today, when I did the Sunnah Followers Kids show, they seemed kind of, they were excited to, for the show, but they were kind of uh, uh, tired. They all were fasting, alhamdulillah. So I made it real quick for them. You know, I didn't make the, the show. We were real quick, quick and out. So, um, subhanAllah, you know, you're going to be experiencing that listlessness, that fatigue. Just, you know, take some vitamins, you know, when it's time to break your fast uh, and just make the better, best use of your time. Spend that time working on your Quran uh, more, you know, reviewing that Quran. Uh, spend your time, you know, here at my website more because today, Sundays are our laid back day. But tomorrow, oh my God, we got classes back to back to back to back from six o'clock to 1130. I'll be sitting here teaching, you know, so, you know, try to uh, catch up on your studies, you know, the, uh, what I'm teaching here and all of that. All right. But inshallah, the fast should be going good for you guys and you should be seeing the benefits too. You know, a lot of you should feel closer to Allah. A lot of you should uh, have a more defined understanding as to what your purpose in life is, you know, so you should see that good things should be happening to you in your life right about now. Uh, you should be able to sense and know that Allah is with you, you know, spiritually, he's aware of what you're doing because it seemed like, oh, wow, Allah was looking out for me with that. Oh, wow, Allah knew what I was saying there. Allah, oh, he responded to me there. You should start seeing those type of uh, b b benefits of the fast during this week. Okay, so this is what I want you guys to focus on uh, for this second week, uh, making the most of your time and your relationship with Allah. And I want everyone to understand that it's all about uh, trying to change yourself to that character that is pleasing to Allah. You should be aware of what your bad habits are now. And so you should be trying to change yourself. And one of the things that we all need to work on is compassion. There is never too much of that. You know, uh, and, and compassion is something that Allah loves the most in people. And it's something that our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never had a, 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 a too much of. He showed compassion even towards his enemies. Okay. And so that's what I want to speak about today. Let me put the PowerPoint up so you can see. We're going to speak about compassion. 
compassion. And the ability to show compassion is a great quality that Allah gives only to those who are fortunate. And Allah denies it to those who are unfortunate, okay? Even though we all have it in our ability to, to become compassionate. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said, Allah created mercy in 100 parts. There's 100 parts of mercy. He sent only one part of it to the earth. And that one part that he sent here to earth, that's the compassion that the animals show to each other. It's also the compassion that we show to each, each other. It is out of this one part that you can see a horse or a camel raise their woof, their hoof over their young ones so as not to crush it. And then the other 90 parts of compassion, Allah kept it with himself. He kept it with himself so he can show it to us on the day of judgment. So the question becomes, how compassionate are you and me? Are we fortunate or are we unfortunate? Okay. The compassion that a mother has for her child. Do you men have that with your wives? Do you children have that with your parents? Do we have that compassion with our neighbors? Do we have that type of compassion with our coworkers? Even though they may not be Muslim. You know, a person doesn't have to be Muslim for us to show mercy to, okay? Compassion is shown to everyone and everything, how we treat the animals, okay? How we take care of the lost earth, that's compassion. So this is something that we really need to work on developing as Muslims. And, uh, Compassion is a perfect quality that we use in the following way. We use it to deal with each other. It's the way that the strong helps those who are weak and protect them from harm. Compassion is the nature which Allah created. But when that nature is erased with sins, then the compassion turns to cruelty. I have found that this to be so true as a dyer. Those Muslims out there that commit sin, those Muslim men who don't wear beards, those Muslim women who don't wear hijab, these are the Muslims that are committing sins. And if you look at their personal lives, they lack compassion with others. A woman like that has no compassion with her children, no compassion with her neighbors no compassion with our relatives as men like that with no beards you know they they have a slip of the tongue a whole lot their tongue slips a lot they say things that they shouldn't say things that cannot be taken back they make those type of mistakes all the time with their tongue and they end up falling into all type of sinful uh actions and the reality is because they're not compassionate people. They lack that compassion, okay? So compassion is what keeps us from transgressing the limits of a law and it keeps us from transgressing limits with each other, okay? We have to understand that Islam demands that we work on obtaining compassion as part of our character. Why? Because Islam, is a religion of mercy. What does the word Islam mean? Islam is an Arabic word that means to submit yourself totally to the will of Allah. Even the meaning is one of compassion. So our way of life is a religion of mercy and its teachings aim at achieving blessings, achieving justice, prosperity, truth, peace, and servitude to a law, not to the people, to a law. 
That's why, you know, we can work in environments. A lot of us have jobs and we work with some of the worst people. I know before I retired, I had, I worked with some of the worst ill-mannered racist people, but I never allowed their character and their behavior to strip me of what I knew to be right. You would never find me uh, uh, using the language they use when I'm speaking to Muslims. I wouldn't come here and speak to the people on my website the way those uh, people I work with speak to each other. Because I'm a religion, I, I belong to a religion of truth, a religion of prosperity, a religion of servitude to a law. I'm not trying to become like the people. I'm not going to use their vulgar talk, their offensive words. If anything, I'm going to give them dawa <clears throat> through my behavior. They'll see through the way I speak, the way I don't use their words. You know, they'll learn from that. So remember, Islam's aim is to uproot all kinds of evil. All because we believe in Allah. Listen to what Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, and we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a mercy for all mankind and jinn. He didn't send the Prophet to succumb to the evils of the world and become like the world. He sent him to be a mercy to us, to teach us, to show us, not to succumb to the evil of those around him. Also, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said Allah will show mercy to those who show mercy to others. Show mercy to those who are here on earth. He who is in the heavens will then show mercy to you. On the day of judgment, when we all have to cross that Sarat bridge, the your co-workers, those nasty, filthy, low-life co-workers that you imitated, that whose ways you picked up, whose vulgarity you picked up, they're not going to be there, you know, to help you across that bridge. Okay. What's going to get you across that bridge are your good deeds, the deeds you did for a law, the way you chose to remain a person of compassion, because it's what a law required. That's what's going to get you across that bridge, guys. And this is what I want you parents to teach your children, because we live in a world where most people do not believe in a law. We're surrounded by, pe by people who have no regard for a law. So you teach your children to not succumb, to not become <clears throat> like their environment. You do not become like your classmates in school. Do not become like your co-workers on the job especially if you're dealing with bad classmates, bad uh, co-workers, and they're filthy people, okay? Don't take pick on their characteristics. Up, up, maintain the characteristics of Islam. We are an upright religion, okay? Don't sit there and say, everybody else is saying it, so I'm going to say it too. Everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to do it too. That's not Islam. That's not a believing Muslim. It's all about what does the law say you should say. Show mercy to people. Show mercy to the animals. Show mercy to the creation. And the creation, you know, Allah will allow the creation to intercede for you on a day of judgment. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever does not show mercy to the people, Allah will not show mercy to him. The similitude of a believer in regard to their mutual love and affection for each other is like one body. When any part of that body hurts, the whole rest of the body feels it. Supana Allah, you know, most of our co-workers are kafir. We don't work with Muslims. You definitely don't want to pick up any of their ways. Islam teaches that what brings us together is the fact that we all believe la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. It doesn't matter what color you are, what race you are, what language you speak, what country you from. The fact that we believe la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, we're one. We're brothers and sisters in faith. 
So we're not going to use offensive names with each other. We're not going to speak down to each to one another. We're going to have love for each other. If I go into a place that's all Chinese I, and they're Muslims, I love you for the sake of Allah. Welcome, my brother. Welcome, my sister. May Allah have mercy on us all. We're brothers and sisters in faith. And it's so good to see that I have brothers and sisters from all over this world. That's the attitude we're supposed to have with each other, not this attitude of using derogatory terms with each other or any of that because that's what the rest of the world does, okay? Compassion, the Kafirs don't have it. Compassion, that's something that we're supposed to work on uh, uh, attaining, okay? We show compassion towards the weak and the old, no matter what their religion, I mean, their, their color is, their uh, language is. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he who does not respect the old and show compassion to the young, nor enjoying the good deeds and forbid the bad deeds is not one of us. Let me use my website as an example. You come into my Zoom room, you know that most of the women in my Zoom room are elderly women. Elderly women, not meaning that they are the kind that's feeble and have to take off a hijab. No, we don't. Alhamdulillah, we ain't got that kind here. But we're older women. And, you know, so there's certain respect you have to give us here. You know, it doesn't matter what the color of the skin is. It doesn't matter what the language is we speak. You're around your elders. So you have to have compassion. You have to watch your words. Watch your speech. Be respectable. Yes, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. But oftentimes we'll come in here and listen to a person's voice and say, oh, that person's an African American. So we can just be relaxed and use the N word and call it a day. Oh, no, not here. Subhana Allah. And even us elderly women, we show compassion towards our youth. The way I speak to my students, I don't speak this way with the kids. You guys see me on the kids show. You know, I push the kids to try to understand the meaning of the Hadith. I push the kids to try to uh, answer the questions, but I don't push them the way I push you, you adults here. I show compassion to them. I try to make it even more easier for them. You know, we have to have compassion for the youth too. So it's not about what color they are, what language they speak, what country they come from. It's about, you know, this is my elderly sister. This is my younger brother in Islam. So it's all about showing respect. Okay. It's all about respect and compassion. Also, we have the Hadith, whereas a Bedouin came to visit, uh, 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 came to the Prophet, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day. And he saw the prophet kiss his children. And the Bedouin said, you kiss your children? We don't kiss ours. And the prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what can I do? Since you have no mercy. Allah removed mercy from your heart. Those people who have slip of the tongues, guys, these are, the, these are men and women who have no mercy in their heart. Oh, I didn't mean to say that, sister. I didn't mean to say that. I was just... I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. How many of you know people like that? You go around them, they just talk and they say such vulgar things and offensive things to you. Then they'll look at you and say, well, I didn't mean that. I just had a slip of the tongue. No, you meant it. You just have no compassion. And that's something that you need to work on because people of compassion think twice before they speak. People of compassion, look at the, the environment. They size up the environment. And then they, they choose their words carefully, depending on the environment, the people there and all of that. That's what a person of compassion does. Slip of the tongues only happen to people that lack it. Okay. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, compassion is something that if it is removed from your heart, you become a miserable person. And we ask ourselves, why is this person always so unhappy? 
Why is this person looking so sad all the time? Why is this person, you can listen to her voice and how she talks and she just sounds depressed. She's a miserable person because she lacks compassion towards others. Start showing compassion to other people, especially your Muslim brothers and sisters. And then maybe Allah will change your condition to something better. People who lack compassion are people who are meant to be miserable. Remember, Allah is kind and Allah loves kindness and Allah doesn't give uh, kindness uh, 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 and Allah confers upon kindness that which he does not confer upon harshness. And he does not confer upon anything else besides it, kindness. Be kind. Stop trying to be like the Kafir. Stop trying to imitate them. Stop trying to get them to accept you and try to make a law, a law accept you. Develop the characteristics he likes, which is kindness mercy, compassion, and patience. We all need that. That'll help you to think. Think before you speak, okay? And again, as Muslims, our compassion is not just with each other, but towards the animals too. The one of the companions tell us that uh, the prophet entered an orchard an orchard that belonged to a man amongst the Ansar. And when he was there, he saw a camel that was groaning. And when the prophet saw that camel, uh, he went to it and, it and wiped its ears and it became quiet. And the prophet asked, who's the owner of this camel? And the young man said, it's mine. And the prophet said, can't you fear a law in regard to this animal? It just complained to me and told me that you starve it. You don't feed it and you cause it hardship. SubhanAllah, we have to show compassion towards the animals. If the prophet was angry at a man uh, uh, mistreating a camel, how would he feel if he knew that Muslims call each other the N-word? Muslims refer to each other with the B-word. We don't do this. We shouldn't do this, Subhana Allah. You have no compassion. Another example, the companions were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam traveling on a journey. The Prophet went to uh, answer the call of nature. And while he went to answer the call of nature, the companions saw a bird and they took her away from her young babies. And the bird began to, to shriek and scream. And the prophet came out from answering the call of nature and said, who aggravated uh, uh, this, the, these babies? Uh, give its mother back to them because the birds were squawking. We can't do that. You're gonna take a mother away from its babies. And another time the prophet saw an ant village that somebody had burnt. He said, who burnt this ant village? He said, no one has the right to punish with fire except the law. You can't travel out in the woods and burn down an ant's village. That's where they live. You're in their territory. Show some compassion. Show some respect. Even when we're traveling through the woods, that's the jinn's territory. That's why the prophet said, be careful throwing rocks and stuff in the woods or in the desert, because that's where the jinn live. You might throw a rock and kill one of their babies or something, and then they'll come back and haunt you. And you'll wonder what's going on because you had no compassion when you walked through their territory. Supana Allah. Compassion. How many of us have it? Also, the Prophet Sallallahu who Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever kills a bird just for fun, that bird will cry out to Allah for help on the day of judgment saying, oh Allah, he killed me for fun. He prevented me from serving my benefit, my purpose. Subhana Allah. And again, listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning 
and ordain for us good in this world and in the hereafter. Certainly we have turned to you. Allah said, as to my punishment, I afflict it upon whom I will, and my mercy embraces all things. That mercy I shall ordain for those who are righteous, those who give in charity, those who believe in our signs, those who follow the prophet. And he commands them with all that is good and forbids them from that which is evil. So those who believe in the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and honor him, help him, and follow the light of the Quran, it is they who will be successful. So again, Allah commands for us to have compassion, guys. Our prophet Muhammad had it. He's the example for us. And also listen to what he said. He said, the people of paradise are in three different groups. Those who had authority in this world and who they were just and fair. Also those people who were kind, merciful and compassionate towards the poor and their relatives. And those who helped others, Subhana Allah. The one who does not stretch forth his hand to help in spite of having a large family to support. These are the people that lose out, guys. They're the people that lose out on paradise and they lose out in this world. Compassion. So as we're into this second week of Ramadan for the year 2023, we're fasting. Uh, we're seeing some of the benefits of our fast. Uh, we're working on how to manage our time correctly. I want us to also look in our hearts and see if we are compassionate. Many of us are not. Look at how you treat your brothers and sisters in Islam. Look at how you talk to each other. Are you using the N word? Are you using the B word? You know, with your Muslim brothers, your Muslim sisters? You know, are you showing respect and reverence to your mother, your father? your children, your goldfish, your cats? Or are you yelling, screaming, beating them up, throwing them around, cursing them out? Some of us got some full jars on our counter right now. So let's work on compassion. I'm going to stop right here. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astakfiruka wa atubu ilayk.